lumpia. It's actually a Filipino dish that's common at Chamorro parties. I have a tablespoon of vegetable oil heating up in the pot, just under medium heat. And that was some diced yellow onion. This recipe can be found in A Taste of Guam. In goes the garlic. The thing about Filipino lumpia is that they use the Filipino style of egg roll wrappers, which are called lumpia wrappers, because they are thinner than paper. And that makes a difference in a good lumpia. We'll stir this up. If I can't use the Filipino style of wrapper, then I just don't make lumpia. It's not the same when you use the thicker types of wrappers out there. So we'll heat this up until the onions become translucent. I'm ready to add my meat. This is three pounds of ground meat. So I've got turkey and pork in here. Break this up and we'll ground the meat, then add the vegetables and the rest of the seasonings. You can put ground beef if you like. Most people make lumpia with ground beef. I'm still browning the meat. It takes a while to brown three pounds of ground meat. At any rate, we'll keep doing this until the meat is no longer pink. The meat is all nice and brown. I'm going to add julienne carrots. Let this cook down just a bit. Now I cannot speak for what originally went into Filipino lumpias. However, Growing up on Guam, I do know that we put carrots and cabbage, onions, and then the seasonings. I'm sure there are different types of lumpias that came out of the Philippines. Banana lumpia, those are good. All right, we'll go ahead and add the cabbage. What I do know is that we, as Chamorros like to have lots of meat in our lumpia. I remember when I first went to Oregon for school and I was looking for lumpia on the menu at a Asian eatery and there was no lumpia but there was spring rolls and it looked very similar. So I brought, I bought a spring roll and was very disappointed because number one, the wrapper was so thick. It, it looked like pie crust, like the fried pie crust at McDonald's from the 80s. And it barely had any meat in it. And I realized there's a difference between lumpia and spring roll or egg roll. So, yes, I'm biased. Once you have had a Filipino style of lumpia that is this ground meat and vegetable mix, then wrapped in a lumpia wrapper, it's very hard to eat any other fried type of egg roll or spring roll with a thick wrapper. We'll cook this down a bit and then add what makes lumpia taste really good. <laughs> the veggies are softened. I'm going to add some soy sauce and Mr. Yoshida sauce. This is like a kicked up version of teriyaki sauce, almost. It's not essential, but it really does enhance the flavor. 
Then I've got oyster sauce. Some people season their lumpia with just soy sauce, salt, black pepper. Seasoning salt and black pepper. Okay. Mix this all up. Once this is done, it's pretty much done. I'm just mixing here. I'm going to set it aside to cool for a bit and drain some of the liquid. Once it cools to room temperature, you can go ahead and roll the lumpia. I'm actually going to drain and set this in the fridge overnight. Just. Uh, because I'm not going to roll this until tomorrow. So I love dishes that you can make in parts and assemble over time. Before we start rolling the lumpia, I wanted to show you the boxes that I use. This is the traditional lumpia wrapper. The box must say lumpia. That way you know it's the Filipino style of spring roll wrappers and that they are paper thin. This package, or this box, comes with two of these packages, and they're very difficult to separate compared to this box, in which each Olympia wrapper is supposedly separated by paper. I haven't used this yet, we'll find out today, but yeah, you can see the paper there, very fluffy because they're not all stuck together. So I'm going to finish up my red box and then we'll get to this one. Lumpia wrappers dry out very easily and when they do they tend to crack as you're rolling them. When you fry the lumpia all the filling comes out. So to help reduce the rate of drying I have a setup here. This is a moist kitchen towel so I soak this in water, wrung it out. And then a couple of sheets of wax paper and I'll separate three to five lumpia wrappers, put them in here, and uh, every time I put one in I cover it back up, put another one, open it, and cover it again. At any rate, three to five at a time, that way the wrappers don't dry out so fast. I divided that one stack of lumpia wrappers into two and put half of it in a Ziploc bag. It was just easier to separate the wrappers that way. And work your way slowly around. The wrappers should be at room temperature. I find it's easier to separate them when they're cold. They're not always this easy. <laughs> you just have to be careful. And this goes into my sandwich of wet kitchen towel, wax paper, and saran wrap. The saran wraps against the counter. When you've separated a couple of the wrappers, just go ahead and put this back in a Ziploc bag. That way the wrappers don't dry out. Okay, so here's my separated wrapper. I'm going to fill it with about four tablespoons of the filling. A little less. I wouldn't do any more. It'll be too big and the wrapper will start to tear. Okay, and you're going to roll this like a burrito. As you're rolling, you want to try to keep your filling compact and roll snugly without pulling too hard. These are going to tear very easily if you pull them too, too tight and roll it, kind of bringing in the edges. You can do it with your other fingers here too. Okay. I have a mixture of six tablespoons water and six tablespoons of flour. And they can have little lumps of flour, it's fine. The paste on the bottom and then paste on top. Oh, flour paste. And you already have a 
sheet pan lined with wax paper, you want the seam on the top or on the side. You don't want to lay the Olympia on its uh, seam side down. paste at the bottom. If there's a hole somewhere, I try to pack it in with a little bit of this paste. I am digging into the batch of lumpia wrappers that are separated with paper. I'm going to pull maybe a quarter to a third of it out as I'm, I've been dying to see how this looks <laughs> and works. So here we go. It's pretty uh, flaky. Okay. Let's give it a shot here. The edges feel very dry already, I can tell. Let's we'll see how this goes. Take the sheet of paper and some uh, recycled craft project, maybe? And we'll just put that aside. Okay. And let's have a look here. Well, it looks just like the other wrappers. Maybe I'll have a stack on the side. I'm tempted to put this in my sandwich of papers so they don't dry out, but maybe we can work more quickly here. Let's see how it goes. I made the filling yesterday. My husband came home from work and saw it. He said, are you going to make lumpia? Yes. It might surprise you, I actually don't cook foods from home as often as you might think. It's just uh, when you've grown up having certain foods, certain food combinations. For me, if I can't have the rice and the barbecue and the pancit and the lumpia all at once, then I just don't want to have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fry some lumpia in a bit, but I wanted to show you how I stored the lumpia in the freezer. This is a freezer gallon Ziploc bag. I laid a sheet of wax paper on the bottom, a row of lumpia, and then just kind of tuck the wax paper on top. Another sheet of wax paper. And then another row of lumpia. I, I am a bit excessive when I wrap or package food from my cake decorating bags to the wax paper here, but it is how it is. And then I would fold this over. I'm pulling my first batch out. The oil is at medium heat. I'm frying this seam side down. Now you have to stand back initially, it's going to pop. And you're going to turn it often. Remember, the inside is already cooked, we're just browning the outside. You can lower your temperature if you need to. You find that they're browning too quickly. This batch is done. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Whoa. I was thinking. My neighbor was stationed on Guam in the Air Force, and I'm going to go 
give his family some. Distracted. I'm done frying the lumpia that I'm going to make for today, and you can see them in the background. But I wanted to show you how my dad taught me to eat a lumpia that's hot. This has already cooled down a little bit, but basically, you use a napkin and you can hold it blowing from one end out the other. You don't necessarily need to bite on this end, but if you blew through this end, the steam and the heat will come out of the other end and it's not so hot. Mm. Nice and crispy. This is a bowl of Finadeni or Guam's hot sauce. Basically, soy sauce, vinegar, hot peppers, onions, and it's our favorite dipping sauce for lumpia. Mmm. Some people use the sweet chili sauce. But if you go through my videos, look for Finadeni, this is the best. Yum. Okay, I wasn't really done. I finished eating that lumpia though, and it was so yummy. I want another one. But when you're going to store your lumpia and it's already cooked and you're waiting an hour till the party, try to keep them in an upright position. That way, any excess oil will drain to the bottom and not make the other lumpias soggy. So if I stacked them, you know, laying down and had other lumpias on top, all this oil is going to seep down to the lower lumpias and they'll just get all soggy. So keeping them crispy as long as possible is the key. And I have done this uh, maybe an hour or two in advance and they were still crispy.